Well, you reek in all that. I found the bloody thing. What was that? Oh, somebody just shook the camera yeah, to make yeah, it look like know, I was yeah. on balance. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, no, you can do better than that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Did oh. you see that? <laughs> the, the plants were shaking his head. You, you know what he that looks like? No, he moved his leg. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Double Toasted live in Las Vegas. That's going to be October 8th. And tickets are finally available. X1Entertainment.com forward slash double dash toasted. Doors open at 6 p.m. Meet and greet and cocktail hour to happen promptly afterwards. So the, 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 the after party is going to be in the same venue. It's like, I think it's like two minutes away from the strip. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, it's going to be a night of comedy, music, games, and as you see, the after party. We're going to have Tone Royal open for us. Come on, and do our thing. Get your tickets now. All right, y'all. Back in 1993, the world was changed, at least the world of filmmaking, was changed by one major movie at that time. Alan! I can't get Jurassic Park back online. Filmmaking cinema was never the same again. And a lot of people say, of course, because... That's what Steven Spielberg does. All right, you go ahead and keep kissing Mr. Spielberg's ass, but let's go ahead and give credit where credit really is due. We never would have had Jurassic Park, that realistic looking ass T-Rex right there, if it weren't for the man behind the story, Michael Crichton. Mm -hmm. So when this movie came out, not only were dinosaurs big again, CG was big, but Michael Crichton was huge. Yep. Michael Crichton was one of those people. That's when, that's when uh, uh, interns and production assistants and producers assistants and uh, you know all kind of Hollywood executives they sent those people out to snatch up every bit of Michael Crichton that they could find. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sure did, didn't they? They did. They did. You know, and they anything with Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton had been in movies for years anyway. Michael Crichton had been directing movies. He had already uh, 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 there was a there was a Jurassic Park style movie before Jurassic Park. It was Westworld. Mm -hmm. But there was another resurgence of Michael Crichton, and there was still plenty of Michael Crichton books out there. ER untouched. Touched. Untouched. ER, ER, ER was yeah, ER, ER Michael Crichton. ER yeah, the show ER yeah. was based from a, 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 on a Michael Crichton property, but. Hey, you know, who wants to hang out in an old stuffy-ass emergency room, man? That ain't fun. <laughs> yeah, ain't no fun right. in there. We want to get back into adventure. You know, like, we let's go back to the jungle and hang out with monsters and creatures and go on at, you know, grand adventures and, you know, let's, let's spectacle is what people want to see. And let's do something that could bring in those nice special effects, whether they be practical or that, C, that good old CG that we saw in Jurassic Park. Somebody said, I got just the property for you. Congo! We're going back to the jungle. Listen, check it out. Check it out, y'all. No, hold, hold on, hold on, because I know y'all thinking, what the hell is this? No, listen, we got a jungle. We got temples, ancient temples. We got lava. We got a talking ape. And we also got mysterious creatures in said temple that kills anybody that tries to get near. It's an old-fashioned jungle adventure. It is. Don't forget the lasers. Oh, and... <laughs> Gotta have, just like your boy, Dr. Evil, lasers. <laughs> and we just came this close to having sharks with freaking lasers. Freaking lasers, <laughs> yeah. Deal, Charles. This is a big fine. Soon for fortune. A diamond mine of incredible bounty. People, oh. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you know oh, yeah. <laughs> you know he's dead. People, I'm going to tell you something right here. Y'all have, uh, you know what, looking at this. You everybody agreed that it deserves to be on a bad movie roast poll. Thus, we did it, and that's why you voted for it. And that must mean that it's a bad movie. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something though. I'm gonna tell you something with this film, man. You might be surprised at what we have to say. Cause I'm gonna tell you something about it before I even get into, into any story with this. We'll go into story details as we go along. Uh, you know, there's just so much craziness here to just. I don't want to dump it all at one time. It's better if you just kind of unravel one thing at a time. But I will tell you this much. When it started out, I was already tearing this movie apart from the first frame. First of all, it's got that old Lion King ass open in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> You, you get that yeah. African man in the background screaming. Uh, it'd be, uh, yeah. uh, 
it on now. You know that people that, that see that that's a that's a personal that's a personal pet peeve of mine with Africa. You know, every time somebody does a movie about Africa, they always got to start out with that sunset rising over the plain. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. With the animals, with the animals, with the with the animal running. Or two. There are cities there. Does everybody just know that, right? Yeah, I mean, she has nobody heard of Wakanda before. <laughs> so, damn, look, oh, I mean, Wakanda. <laughs> I mean, and it straight up is Lion King, and then, right after you see that Lion King open, they got Simba out there. Oh, they, he's like, oh, they playing my music? Yeah, they, he had to get up. Oh, then my man. The trucks are coming. It's time to perform. Yeah. And they always got that, you know, I'll tell you, even though they didn't do it in the opening, they always got that man. Oh, yeah. You know, they always have to have that man singing. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that... <laughs> Otherwise, how do you know where you're at? Yeah. You won't know you're in Africa, well, right? Well, see, that's the thing. They go too far with trying to show you where you're at because cause I, don't, I don't like in movies about Africa that just show random black people sitting around just looking at shit. Uh. Yeah, this is every time these movies of Africa open up, they always have to show you to make sure it's authentic Africa. They just got just black people doing that looking around shit. You know, and what makes me mad about it is that it's usually a movie with the all white cast that's leading, mm -hmm. right. but they always got to add, you know, for authenticity. Just random shots of black people. Right. Just looking. Just looking around. Just look, not, not doing not, shit. Not, not, they're not doing shit. Not doing always, a fucking thing. Always confused by the modern technology right. that the white people are pulling yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah, Is but, that their car? But for them, <laughs> they're, they're just like, oh, it's the latest batch of white people who, who are going to get killed. Yes. <laughs> yes. But the more this movie went on, the more I really did have respect for, Cong for Congo, man. This, this movie. Uh, listen. Now, before we go too far with that this is it's still bad all right you know but but i i admire it for its ambition hey listen the problem is with this movie is that it is it is too ambitious it it is it, for for its budget for its budget and it, look i thing is i read this book now i don't remember a whole lot about this 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 book or this movie i remember just enough to know they changed some small things uh, in one detail, I was like, wow, I actually learned something from this, which you'll find out later. But it's a, it's the book is kind of crazy, too, if I remember, because a lot of sub, a lot of the plots that you see here are the subplots. They are in the book. If, it's a lot of movies in one. That it is. It's a lot of it's a lot of mixing of genres, man. And I like when movies do that and can mm -hmm. pull it off. Yeah. These ain't really gelling. There's a lot of water and oil that's mixing it's right here. True, true. But like you said, there's some respect and like, well, you were trying to do something. Yes. This could have been very small and straightforward, but you know, you're kind of mixing it up. Then, I, okay. I it's a that. lot of genres and probably too many genres for one movie. I mean, to just give you an example, it's it's a techno thriller. It's a monster movie. It's a horror movie. It's sci-fi. It's a kids movie. Yeah. All of these things in one. So this movie's really trying to do a lot. You know what you got? You got several characters on an adventure, and they all have different agendas. They all do. No, they do. And nobody's going, well, what the f well, I'm not with that. They're just like, oh, that's what you're into? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> no, I got, I got my thing. You no. got yours. Okay. Everybody's pushing and pulling. And you know what? Even with all these genres, it could have worked. <laughs> if the movie wasn't taking itself so seriously. It plays it straight, and that's fine. Sometimes it's, that's why Predator worked, because it's crazy, and they, and they played it straight. Mm. But Predator, we just did a review of this a few days ago. I said the reason why it worked with them playing, playing it straight is because I have... I, I strongly believe that they were aware at how over-the-top and, and silly that movie is. Mm -hmm. They are not aware at how silly this shit is. In this, you got Joe Don Baker <laughs> as R.B. Travis. Joe Don Baker. Joe Don Baker, man. Uh, and here he, he plays this guy, uh, R.B. RB Travis. And he plays, he plays this guy like a corporate villain. He's so, he's such a, he's such a corporate billionaire. Perfect, you say? A flawless diamond. He found it. Man rolls up at, with a golf club. Uh-huh. Because that's what hand. billionaire tycoons do sure, all day. Sure. They just play they golf. Just, they play golf all day well, long. They're always putting on, on some green in their in their fake ass green in their office or somewhere. Yeah, they're always yeah. somewhere to but, putt. But this man always he know he just got back. He said he 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 got interrupted at the golf course no. to come see this big news right no. here. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing this guy ever does is play golf 
and yell at people. Yeah, the thing is, this guy, and oh, he, the good thing to have that, he has that golf club around. <laughs> you know, he, he carries that golf club around. He carries that golf club around for, for, for two reasons. To play golf and... Charles, Charles. Tear up shit when he gets mad. Right. Tear up his own shit when he gets mad. You can afford it, right? I'm surprised that whole building ain't demolished because he stays mad. He stays mad. I ain't, I ain't never seen... I had, I had to laugh because I've never seen a movie character who's just mad. That mad all the time. He stays mad. You can't like, say nothing to him. Th this man is living proof that money does not buy <laughs> happiness. Exactly. Sir. Use the fire extinguisher on that, please. What's the code, sir? Do what I say! <laughs> God damn! Calm! If there was ever time to tell somebody to calm your ass down, it's now. Right. It's like, what, what's the code so I can get in here and help you? Don't be asking me that! <laughs> His son is played by Bruce Campbell. Yes, that Bruce Campbell, the chin himself. Oh, yeah. Uh, who. I know y'all, everybody loves Bruce Campbell. He's the coolest cat in the world, daddy. -o, you know, <laughs> daddy -o. But but he, in this movie, I, I I just can't take him seriously, especially when they give my <laughs> when they give my intro like this. Karen? I read you, Charles, and I see you. Well, you're reeking all that. I found the bloody thing. What was that? Oh, somebody just shook the camera yeah, to make yeah, it look like know, I was yeah. on balance. Oh, man. <laughs> you can know, do better than that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Did oh. you see that? <laughs> the plants were shaking his head. You, you know what that looks like? No, he moved his leg. <laughs> oh. Karen? I read you, Charles, and I see you. Well, you're reeking all that. I found the bloody thing. No, no plants didn't shake at all. Did you see that? Nothing. Nothing did. Yeah, it's his feet stay planted, too. But, but that looks like uh, the intro when you're on one of those motion rides. It's yeah, at, at yes. yes. And they have the screen yes. where they're doing the setup for it. Like yes. the Back to the Future ride where they have the, the actor in front of a green screen mm -hmm. going, Oh, God, you got to help me and Marty. You know, it's yeah. like, this is some cheap ass yeah. shit. Can we just start the ride, please? Did, did did, this is people, this is a movie produced by Hollywood juggernauts, Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. You know, released by Paramount, a huge studio, and this is the best that they could do. Spend all this money on special effects. Y'all can't even put a fan on those plants to blow them? <laughs> Nothing! <laughs> what plants? He's in front of a green screen, man. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's like, it's like she's about to go, Okay, Charles, really, where are you? You in the next room? Are you pranking me? Like, like you you had some bitches ass. Like, you ain't like, in the jungle. Whoa, that's some bad yeah, effects right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. This is where some of the, the, the sillier things that start to happen with the writing, man because of the bad writing that goes on, which is why this movie is probably getting criticized like it is, even though I have respect for it. Uh, so in the movie, as I tell you, here's where the horror comes in. So some, some creature, you've seen the movie, you know what it is, but you know, just for the sake of mystery right here, for those who haven't probably, uh, some mysterious creature has destroyed not only some of the equipment, but also the whole team that was there. Did I say kill? I mean, them up. <laughs> I can't see what I'm looking at. Got this man's eyeballs popping out of yeah. his head over here. Now this is a, this this is a billionaire tycoon who's trying to keep a lot of stuff. You know he's got a, got a lot of power. He's trying to you know protect his best interests, which is this equipment that's out there in the in the in the Congo. Uh, does RB hire mercenaries <laughs> to go out there and do this? No. There's no time for that. <laughs> There's no time for Even that. They, and we're not going to shoot another scene in another location, so let's just get all this done in this room right here. He goes up to Laura, who plays a character named Karen, and says, Karen, get up and go get my shit. You're going to have to go down there, Dr. Ross. You're good in the field. You were good in Panama. Now, once you're local, that laser's power pack should give off a readable signal. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, she's like, she's like, you lost your goddamn mind. Yeah. Now that's what you would think, because I was not the only one thinking that uh, that Karen would turn around and say that. Yeah, but she wants to go after Charles. Well, that's the thing. You think she would say that, or I don't know. I'll do it, but give me a raise or something, or hey, get me an office with a window uh, scene or view or something like that. No, no, that's that's none, none of that comes into play. None of that leverage comes into play at all when somebody asks you to, I don't know, go into the Congo and face dangerous creatures that just massacred a whole team of experienced scientists. And find out what I'm not, Charles. Tell me you love your son. I do. And that's why you're sending me. It is. <laughs> well, okay then. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's like. 
Is that gonna make you go? Yeah, 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 yeah it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah she says, I will go not for a raise, not for an office with a nice view, not for a key to the you know executive bath or anything like that. No, I'll go as long as you love your son, which has been established clearly that he does not. Right. <laughs> right. This now we've jumped into another genre when we meet Amy the talking gorilla. Good. That's green. Yeah, that's your coat. No, Amy, on the paper. Uh, uh, on the paper. Put it where the do you want to get on my ass? I don't care. Okay, Amy, do it. <laughs> There's so many moments where I was just kind of like, they would have pissed this gorilla off plenty of times. So that's Amy. And the thing with Amy, and the reason why this seems like a, uh, the reason why this seems like a uh, uh, a children's film is because uh, Amy pretty much is like the ET of the of, of the mm-hmm. movie. You know, she's the gizmo of the movie. Mm. Uh, and the movie, and also she's a talking gorilla, which means she talks with sign language, which we know Michael Crichton has been pulling from, he's pulled, uh, uh, you know, bits of real science to put him into his movies. Sure. And he, he's kind of, you know, expanded on those to make them more sci-fi in a way. But uh, Amy is based on such, you know, uh, 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 pr- projects and experiments where they've taught gorillas how to talk. Coco. Yeah, Coco and all that. Well, I, you know, I don't even know because this, this was written back in 1980. I was re- it was published in 1980, mm. so this might even predate, oh, predate uh, Coco. Coco, oh. yeah. But uh, also, you know, because and it's funny because the movie makes a, a big deal about Amy being able to do sign language, but uh, they kind of downplay that. You know, for a gorilla, she ain't she ain't really a bad artist. Hey, what's this room starting to look like? I don't know, a bunch of shitty gorilla paintings. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she paints these pictures, though, because she wants to go home. You know, she's, and also it lends itself to the mystery of the bigger, the bigger mystery of the movie. This is what I was talking about, where the movie, you know, so many things mixing together that some of these things just clash, some of the stuff, it kind of, it, it kind of steps on the writing of another story or another genre. Because, I mean, some parts of this, now, this is, this is just me, you know. I, I'm a sucker for like cute things and movies and whatnot. And uh, Amy's sweet. Amy's so sweet, man. And and and, and she and she's, she's so much the heart of the movie, you know that. And that's why this part, because she is so sweet, because she is so so friendly and and looks like something that they would actually try to. And I'm sure they did at the time, try to uh, you know mass market to kids out there. Mm. This is why it feels like a kids movie. Amy. Hey, you. Yes. Don't give me no, oh, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 Dude, just on the ground, dead, <laughs> paralyzed. Uh, I love how all of them just ra- just casually pick up this four hundred pound gorilla. Yeah, no, it's, like, it's not a know. chimp. It's, it's, it's yeah. a gorilla. <laughs> oh, Martin, you know, love gives him strength. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. You, just you see, just see your legs crack on the knee. Yeah, exactly. Get him. <laughs> uh. I will tell you this though, uh, Dylan Walsh, not a great character in the movie. You know, he's overshadowed by everybody, <laughs> but but his but but he is performing with an animatronic ape. So I give him credit for being being able to be. Look, he's partly responsible for. If you feel like I do, and you feel like these are very emotional scenes, he's partly responsible for mm-hmm. that happening. Too bad that this part wasn't his own movie, at least for me, because like I said, I like that part. I think it's very sweet. Um, you know, uh, and for the time that this movie was made, I also feel like uh, Amy. I thought Amy was pretty cool, man. I mean, it's obvious today that Amy's not, you know, a real gorilla. But I thought that the way they the, they 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 played up her animal side while not playing too much up to the human characteristics, I thought that was cool. Stan Winston did the effects here, so and once you see some of the other gorilla effects in here, it's like, all right, you know what? For the time it came out, yeah, nineteen ninety five. These are pretty good. Like as, yeah. as much as I wanted to go, like, oh, you could tell that's fake. I was like, but it's nineteen ninety five, and you can't always tell. You know, some of the smaller technology they have here, like uh, the ability for people to sign mm-hmm. and have it actually be vocalized through a machine. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that was kind of cool. It's the tech that Amy uses to talk with when she's doing her uh, her sign language. Our subject today, William, was born without the organs of speech. Isn't that right, William? That is absolutely right. 
you black mother. Oh, all right, everybody. All right, all right, all right, all right. Presentation over. Thank y'all for coming. <laughs> Like eight, so, so Amy, they, they give her like this Nintendo power glove that she wears, and she's able, and she uses that to speak. And after, I will tell you, man, every time, every time Amy spoke, uh, I got emotional. Like this part of the movie, I actually did really like, man. Hello, Amy. Amy, pretty. Now, like I said, I'm a sucker for that kind of storytelling, man. You know, I'm the dude that saw E.T. five times in the theater when I was a kid and cried my ass off and everything. And everything. Uh, was moved by this here. Of course, this movie ain't going to let you have nothing. <laughs> And let you have that little and bit. Let you have that little bit. This movie ain't going to let you have no nice things, man. All we got to be somebody come in and say something stupid and ruin the mood. This isn't Mr. Ed. I know it's not Mr. Ed. She's like, I can't take your dumb country ass nowhere. <laughs> Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> I know there ain't no goddamn Miss Ed. Right? Yeah, it's like, you don't have to comment on everything. <laughs> How about you shut up and listen <laughs> for I once. told you before we left the house, do not embarrass me. That's one of the biggest problems with this movie, man. The comedy. The comedy. <laughs> the, what? The, the comedy. The yeah, what? The, yeah. See, you can't say it's not taking this. It mean that it's taking itself too seriously. <laughs> I do think it's taking itself seriously. Don't, it don't know. I, 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 I'll describe it this way. Uh... When the when the comedy is intentional, it's painfully unfunny. <laughs> yeah. When it's unintentional, it's hilarious. You know those rules, man. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Like like your boy Tim Curry, man. Oh, oh man, I saw him in the trailer. Boy, the well, moment the, he the, was too much. The moment they introduce, he don't even say anything, and you already look at him like this old cartoon ass villain we got here. Amy, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, Amy will fall before me, thanks to my evil ring. <laughs> if you think he looks crazy, like we just showed you, wait until this man opens his mouth. Now there isn't a foundation in motion that would fund an expedition with that objective. I will pay. I will pay for Amy to go home. First of all, how long you? Standing there, yeah. right. watching us, <laughs> and how long you been eavesdropping on conversation? Second of all, and who are you, sir? Herkema Homolka, formerly of Romania, free now of the chains of Ceausescu, traveling the world, doing good. Why do you sound like a drowning Borat? Yeah, <laughs> he sound like Borat trying try to talk and drink at the same mm. time. Oh. This boy, this accent is terrible. <laughs> that is that accent is terrible, y'all. But, <laughs> but just, just the whole too. like the way he looks, those those crazy looking eyes, yeah. and him just showing up in somebody's conversation. You can even see from the way they. They'd look up at him like, they, what the? What are they looking up at like? Like how long your Dracula looking ass been standing <laughs> yeah. up here? What I, I, okay, what I did like is that you see him because he comes in and introduces himself, like he's looks like he's some kind of evil duke or count, yeah, or something. So you think that this man got money, like he's Doctor Doom or something from Latveria <laughs> or some shit. It turns, it, it turns out, it turns out he's just he's just a broke ass con man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they don't even try to play. They like, no, no, no. And once you find out that he's broke, that he ain't got shit, I expect him to go like, eh, yeah, my accent's not real. I'm really English. But no, right. he's, he's stuck with that. You know, he stayed with it. He stayed with that broke-ass accent. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. They are ready to, to, to fly off me like, oh, by the way, there's a bit of trouble with the funds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is it's like the movie said, man, why are we playing? This, this fool ain't got <laughs> shit. He ain't got no money. Mr. Homolka, there seems to be some glitch. They're unloading the plane. Yes. You see? Oh, <laughs> yeah, about right that, somebody about that. Gonna, When somebody say, yes, yeah, yeah, you yes. know. You know they up to no good. <laughs> right. You know they ain't shit when they do that. Uh, about that. I knew a guy just, a, a guy. Wait, but hold with... on, hold on, because you, you know he's a crook. <laughs> Unfortunately, there has been a slight interruption in my credit flow. <laughs> Which means you ain't had you shit ain't no in the first place. In the first place, yes. He's talking to the people inside the, I guess, the airport or whatever. And, he, and they ask him a question. They say, <laughs> they say, hey, man, it's good as long as everything is good. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. And I was like, that mother you got yeah, no yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he always had that, sm that same smile on his face. He said, yeah, no army. is there a problem? He's like, ain't no problem, ain't no problem. He's like, ha, 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 ha. He looked like Daniel Kaluuya in, in Get Out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, the transport. Not unless there's a problem. 
<laughs> yeah, like, like you, you, you know me, you know me. Come on, stop bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dad. I got it right. Hey, I got it right here. You very funny. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we good, right? <laughs> I love him in this movie, man. I am laughing my ass off. I can't wait for him to come back on screen. But I don't think they meant for him to be that funny. No, I don't think. I don't. <laughs> if Tim Curry ain't taking this seriously, then why should anybody take this yeah, seriously at all? Man. Everybody who comes in after this goes like, yeah. I'm with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> or, 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 or rules out. They, look, everybody just do what they want to do. They get on that plane. They, yeah. They get on that plane and they... They put that gorilla up in the cabin with everybody. <laughs> oh, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no. They put that gorilla up there ride with everybody. What am I doing? We could do a cocktail yeah. drink service. No, and, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh wait a minute. I'm sorry. Did you see this? Yeah, oh, the thing is, they don't, and to relax, they don't give her no tranquilizer or nothing. <laughs> that... Amy, she, to, to, to relax, she does what anybody else does on a play. She orders a martini. <laughs> Are you serving that ape a martini? She's a loud one. It'll calm her down. And drinks a comp in first class, by the way. <laughs> and by the way, Laura Lenny, whose name is Karen, she really is being a Karen right here. She is. Mind your own goddamn business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you lucky we let you on. Well, you yeah. pay for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, excuse me. <laughs> but just, just like a Karen, we seen all these planes. They mind her own goddamn business. Yeah. Excuse me, is that gorilla drinking a martini? <laughs> My joke, goddamn business. Let this gorilla drink a martini. <laughs> she is right, though. That hey, gorilla should not be drinking a martini. <laughs> Hey, he, who knows her better than her handler? Well, the handler was responsible. He'd give her a nutritious meal like you get yeah. from HelloFresh. Yeah. Right <laughs> why get that? Why get that gorilla a drink <laughs> when you could have HelloFresh and have so many healthier options right here, Martin? That's all. <laughs> Amy could have a great nutritious meal that Peter and her made together with HelloFresh. You know, that's the meal platform where they offer a selection of not only just dinners, but now lunches, breakfasts, snacks, desserts, and more. But you guys know HelloFresh. This is the, uh, this is the, the, the service which brings you, they deliver to your door fresh ingredients so that you can make these meals yourself. And here's the thing about this, and I'll tell you about all the things that you can do with HelloFresh, like the meals are very quick and easy to make, sometimes 30 minutes or less. They even got meals that are prepared for you so that you can prepare them in about 20 minutes or less. Nice. Also have a lot of variety, a lot of ways that you can go in and get straightforward meals of your choice, of your category. You like a lot of meat, go ahead and get a meat meal. You like a, you're a vegetarian, you can get a vegetarian meal. You can save a lot of money with HelloFresh. 72% cheaper than going to a restaurant. I don't need to tell you that. You know how expensive it is to eat Hell these days. yeah. Especially with people being understaffed. Mm-hmm. And people trying to make up for it, make up for COVID times by charging a lot. A lot of times when you go to a restaurant, you get shitty service, you cook it yourself. Yep. Get the best service possible. And, talking about I just go to the grocery store then. Well, HelloFresh can even be cheaper than a grocery store. So you know what? You're saving time and money with HelloFresh. And, as I said, it has a lot of variety, more variety than it ever had before. There's something new going on with HelloFresh. You know, this fall season, they're going to have 55 plus weekly options for you, along with some new recipes and meal preps. Talking about HelloFresh, a lot of people have tried HelloFresh and they've emailed me about it, you know, per my recommendation, telling them to let me know how they feel about it. And people are actually <laughs> pretty cool with it. They're like, damn, I'm cooking. You know, people are like, I didn't really cook before. Like this, and they've, they've sent me pictures like, damn, look what I made, man. Yeah, yeah. It ain't burnt. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. it's not, it actually got color in it. It ain't all black. But I've told you about the perks of having HelloFresh. You've tried it out. A lot of Toasties have taken my recommendation, as I told you, and tried HelloFresh and been very satisfied with it. And one of the reasons why they did try it at first is because I gave them an offer that they could not refuse. There's a lot that HelloFresh wants to do for you to sign up. First of all, go to HelloFresh.com forward slash Double Toasted 16 and use the code Double Toasted 16 and get up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Again, I want to thank HelloFresh 
for sponsoring this portion of the show. America's number one meal kit. And I want to thank all of you out there for your support, as usual. All right. Where were we? Oh, Tay. Oh, okay. Here's the thing, man. Uh, shit, even... Yeah, I, no, I forgot. I did not remember that Ernie Hudson was in this movie. I forgot that completely. Did not know at all. <laughs> well, I knew <laughs> just from the credits, looking it up, I knew he was in the movie. I did not know he was in this, but he comes in. I told you, look, once Tim Curry comes in and starts getting crazy, everybody starts doing that thing. He says, shit, if Tim Curry can have a crazy-ass accent, shit, old Ernie can too. You need to switch airports. Oh, shit, why? Bomb the president's car. Where's the president? No, they didn't. You know, he was kind of talking low, and I said, is this fool faking a British accent yeah, up here? It's, it's talking it's, like, it's, it's talking a, like uh, the, the Cary Grant doing that mid-Atlantic yes, accent right yes, there. Yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Cary Grant or Ronald Coleman. Because I was yeah. looking at this, and I said, this man's talking. He's trying to be a black Cary Grant. I'm not, some of y'all might be too young to remember Cary Grant, but if you want to know about Cary Grant and how he talked, uh, just imagine her Ernie Hudson as a white dude. <laughs> Monroe Kelly, I'm your great white hunter for this trip, though I... Happen to be black. I'm like, what the uh, f like, is this fool doing? Wait, are, is he for real? He was like, <laughs> I was like, Hello, Diane. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, you ah, don't. I yeah. King. yeah, I was like, you don't have to do this, darling. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on with you, man? <clears throat> Daddy, uh, you know that, that. I was looking at this, and I was like, you know, the, the, the accent is bad, but the thing is, the thing is. You know, I thought he was kind of, I thought you, like he was faking it at first yeah, or something. Yeah. Or I was just not hearing it too yeah, well. Yeah, I thought he was just doing a, a little affectation for yeah. what he had to say. But it's like, oh, he's serious about yeah, this. Yeah, he's being serious. Now today, because the, th the thing, he's doing an accent. And I was like, what the f is that? But after a while, I was like, but he is cool. I mean, yeah. the accent is bad, but I'm like, if you ain't going to stop, okay. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll, just, we'll just go with it. It, it. it is what it was like, you're actually cool. But you'd be cooler if you didn't feel the need to put this accent on. I just let it go. I was like, brother, if you want to do this, I ain't going to say nothing. If you ain't going to stop, I'm not going to ask you to stop. That accent is, is, is so bad. It's like, you know, you can't help but look at it and be like, man, this fool is faking this. Yeah. And it does get to a point where... It does get to a point where I was, I was thinking, he's just faking this shit because he's trying to get that white girl. That's what, <laughs> yeah, that's all I was saying. Throughout the whole thing, he's like, so is she single? Yeah. What's her story? Really? Yeah, yeah, he's sitting there he's with Tim Curry, who he's pissed off. He's like, so what's she all about? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know. Yeah. Uh, what? No, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, old chap, is she <laughs> guy over there? What do you say? Have you, have you said anything about me? <laughs> but there is a point in the movie. So he's sitting up here trying to push, put on this this posh accent and try, think he's fooling everybody. I was like, this bitch ain't fooling nobody, man. He just putting this shit on to get that white girl. And there is a moment, because I was listening for it. There is a moment. And I was listening. I said, he going to slip. And there is a moment where he, because he, he, later on she said something to him. And I guess he just kind of got into it. And, and his black almost came out. Air conditioner. Well, I suppose it is a bit much. Shit, I'll take one. <laughs> shit, I'll take one. Yeah. I, mean, uh, what's, uh, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, split it. Yeah, oh, no, you got me shit. <laughs> I was like, shit, I'll take one and the air conditioner too, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> come on with that. Yeah. Ass. <laughs> Sat up there. He said, let that, let that shit slip. Yeah. He said, oh, air conditioning. And she, and she, it, the thing is, she, he was looking at her. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Because she got to drop his guard because he's like, oh, shit, she being nice to me. <laughs> shit, she's trying, pants to, on she, she trying to give me air conditioning right now. Air conditioner. Well, I suppose it is a bit much. Shit, I'll take one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Shit, I'll, yeah. shit, I'll take I mean, jolly good show, yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. Shit, you know yeah, what's up. Come on, that's, I'm just trying to get some ass. Yeah, yeah. we're we gonna, we gonna do this in one. Yeah, what, you know, what's up, you know I can't keep this up the whole trip. Yeah. No, shit, what's up? Fuck. Come on now. You bullshit, you, nah, yeah, bullshit. Yeah, why are we bullshit? Yeah, yeah why are we going you, bullshit? Yeah, shit, you knew I was full of shit from the beginning, didn't you? By the time Delroy Lindo came on, I didn't even know what his accent. I was so confused, bro. I didn't even know if his accent was bad or good. I didn't know what the fuck That's was going the thing. on. I was like, you know, this this movie just accent a palooza here. Because <laughs> Delroy Lindo, <laughs> he like, I, I think you're supposed to be African, but I don't know if you know that. I don't know what. The, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. He sounded like he was from Romania. <laughs> yeah. I just, like really? at, at this point, I don't even know what the. F it might be good. It might not be. Uh, I'm I'm so confused. I I don't know. 
Mr. Homoka. Stop eating my sesame cake. <laughs> like at first, I was like, "Okay, that's African," but he started yelling like that's some that completely different. Is not. You know, it's funny. <laughs> all these people not doing their natural accents. Like yeah. Joe Orlando and Tim Curry are both from England. Yeah, you got you know Ernie Hudson from probably Philly or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just like so yeah. I wonder if they're just judging. Like, look, like, look at Ernie oh, Hudson's shitty ass accent. Just, I mean, it's just like they came in because sometimes actors will do that. They'll, oh, I mean, you you know, you're an actor. You know, yeah, they sure. can say like, "I got this idea for the character. I want to go with this accent." Right. You know, and, and if nobody puts them in check, then they'll just do it. Yeah. They just threw a box of accents on the ground and say, "Just pick one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? pick whatever you got." Sugar, yeah. sugar. Yeah. Oh, I got Romanian. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, I wanted that one. Yeah, Dara Lindo plays an African warlord in here who actually gives them entry into the Congo and sets them up with uh, with resources. <laughs> like gives them also gives them their passports back. All the stuff he stole from them. Uh, but Delroy Lindo, who's a great actor, all these people are great actors. Yes, yeah. It's just I don't know what the. I, it got to a point I just didn't know what was going on anymore. Uh huh. And <laughs> or, or why it was going on. My ears took such a beat and they were just numb <laughs> after yeah. a while. I didn't you, know. You can follow the plot, but just what is happening with these actors and what's going on? And like I don't understand. I wish I could have been there. Or he'd meet somebody who was there to explain to me yes. how this had come about. Fellow is a big bag of shit. You should shake this rat from off your neck. He owes money to everybody everywhere he goes. I will ask you to wait outside, Mr. Molka. <laughs> oh, shit! Hey, 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 I'm going, man. You ain't gotta, I'm going, man. You ain't got to grab him and be like that. It's not, it's not even an ask. Yeah. <laughs> And I like the way he got his, you to outside. His, his head just shook. <laughs> I said, fuck. Like, I ain't even get a chance to get up. <laughs> Bottom lip shaking. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I was going to go. like this. He's like, I'm used to this. <laughs> yeah, but and yet they still keep this fool. They, they still keep this man. Because there's no point for him to be around. He's got a different agenda than everybody else. They yes. know this. <laughs> yeah, he's after, like, he's greedy, man, which we all know. He, he's, he's after some diamonds in this lost city. And we already know there are diamonds there because yeah. they're trying to get it for this communication satellite. So th- th- this is one of the dumbest parts of the movies that they keep this fool around when they don't need him. Listen, all of this is crazy. Yes, <laughs> needless to say, that's an understatement. But it's here that, where I say that the movie is kind of ahead of its time. And as I said, this is nothing, it's nothing big. It was not anything that's groundbreaking or revolutionary. It's just that at a time, okay, so today everybody's so, you know, they're, they're, we, we hear diversity being talked about like it's a new thing, mm-hmm. which it, in certain ways it is. I mean, look at Black Panther, you know, uh, that, again, that was, that was something that was doing diversity in a way that they never would have done back in the 90s. But we talk about diversity. We talk about, uh, you know, female power in, in these movies. Uh, female empowerment in these movies. You know, uh, this was made in 1995, and before diversity, before there was a big push for that, like we have right now, this was a movie where you had, in a genre movie, an action blockbuster, you had a black man and a, and a woman mm-hmm. as your action leads. Yeah, they are the most competent characters <clears throat> in the entire movie. Yeah, they're the ones that actually, they're, they're, they're in control, they're the ones in the lead. Uh, and sure, the action might be silly sometimes. Oh my God. Like shooting flare guns and heat-seeking yeah. missiles. I Listen, I don't know. Maybe, Maybe works. that works. You know, the heat from the flare gun pulls them away. I don't know, but... There ain't no flare gun like that, though. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, you can't. I, that's... Hey, that's why I said I don't know. That, but I do know that with this... Uh, you had them there, man, mm-hmm. taking control of the movie. Yeah, nice shot. Yeah, that? and and and, and mm-hmm. Dylan Walsh in the film. Uh, you know, I, not, now don't take this as a discussion where I'm saying, you know, I'm I'm talking about how, you know, yeah, take it away from the white man. White man has everything. You know, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all. Never have said that. I'm just don't so don't take it that way when I say this. Again, you know what this is doing ahead of time is that not only is it putting like people of color, a black man in a lead role, an action lead role, a woman in an action lead role. But your white dude who would normally be doing all that is pushing the background. Yeah. He's the dude that has the lamest job. Mm. Well, it's a cool job hanging out with Amy, but it's sure. not it's no action job. No, no, exactly. Exactly. And for the most part he's just there to go, guys, what are we doing? Well what about Amy? 
well, I need to get Amy to yeah. the jungle. He's just, and, he got to. like, yeah, we ain't even thinking about you right now. Yeah, yeah. He, it's a cool job that he has, but he's, like I said, he's not the most interesting mm -hmm. character. He's probably the least interesting character in the movie. The only character l less interesting than him than his is his uh, scared assistant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who they, they brought along. Some people saying that make a good action movie poster right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it would actually. It looks yeah. like it. Yeah. Like they could do a sequel with just the two of them. And I'm going to tell you, it's cool that the movie, you know, recognized that it needed to have a black lead. It's it, it, almost like they had to do it because this, you know, this movie, while it's already, you know, not great, it would have felt even more outdated, probably even offensive, had they not had a black lead in it. Mm. And I'll tell you why, because, uh, you know, this, 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 this would have been another jungle adventure where you would have had all white leads and black people in the background talking about ooga booga, ooga and, ooga, ooga, and yeah. carrying bags on their heads and all that kind of shit. Or you would have had, you know, the the the, the tribesmen out there. Yeah. You know, that's like like we see in all these other jungle adventure adventure movies that would predate this. Um, you know, cause it cause those tribes, those tribesmen, they're all through the movie. They're all throughout the film. Uh our dudes carrying bags. But you know, later on in the movie you get into more like the tribes and the jungles, like these two ashy brothers right here. Yeah, I'm <laughs> I only see two. Yes, that's how they are. These brothers look like, they look like they just got the shower and did not rinse that soap off. <laughs> Shampoo still in the right now. Fight with flour. It's, yeah. it's leave-in conditioner. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> they do the typical rituals. Like you see in the movies, you know, there's always got to be something where they're out there chanting to a rock or yep. some strange thing. Hey, you getting down, boy? Yeah, you know, but this is this is typical stereotypical stuff that you know we would that we would see in this kind of thing, and would definitely be offensive even for the '90s mm. had they not had a black lead in there. Sure. And the movie even acknowledges, acknowledges that, man. Yeah, that was that was cool. Yes, yeah, you know, and the movie's acknowledging it How in a way where they're talking about. Well, I'll show you. Oh, they, they 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 so they acknowledge it in a way where it seems like they're doing it within the story. <laughs> Why are they laughing? They asked who was in charge. I said I was. What's so funny about that? I'm black. I should have luggage on my head. In other words, Ooh. in a native language, they said, please. <laughs> 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 but uh, not only are they acknowledging it uh, in the story, but that's a way of them throwing some shade at Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that is, uh, I thought, that is one of the ways that I thought, wow, this movie is in a very small way ahead of its time. Sure. You know, a lot of movies weren't doing that. It's yeah. Congo. Yeah, no, I caught that too. <laughs> like Ida BC there from uh, yeah. Oz. Yeah. yeah. I could not pronounce that brother's name. Uh, uh, Adewale. Like I said, you would have been seeing, you know, would have been any other jungle adventure that would have been borderline to just straight out offensive. And I respect the movie for that, man. That's what I talk about when I say I respect this movie for a lot of things that it was doing. Yeah, that's, that's good. Which, that's yeah, exactly. which it does not get that kind of respect. It's just the... The, the the shitty talking monkey movie that got a lot of raspberry nominations that year. Drinking martinis and smoking weed. Yeah. I mean, come on, brother. It's, it's not hard to see how something like that can I, get lost. I, I, <laughs> I said, I did, I did, I said it ain't good. No, no, no. I'm just saying a, a great part like that with just with Ernie Hudson saying, I should have luggage on my head. That can get lost when you got my man, you got Amy drinking martini. Oh, yeah. And shit like yeah. that. It's like, can y'all not put yeah. that in there so we can concentrate on this good stuff? You know, and that's what this movie has mostly been, too. It's mostly been a jungle adventure. And I, and I tell you, man, uh, they got a lot of a lot of scenes in here for a jun jungle adventure flick that, you know, that, that, are, that are pretty cool. You know, that's that, like would have would have would have fit perfectly within like a Disney ride or something. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. What was how you that? Let that? How you let that big ass hippo get the drop on you like that? Oh, that was a hippo. That was I a hippo. Tell. I couldn't that tell a, what that, that was. That was a ninja ass hippo that snuck up on him. Ain't no, no, you know, hippo can sneak up on you. That that, that hippo really can. Is. They they do it all the time. Oh wow. That hippo got stealth. Oh, she didn't even look around when that shit yeah, came up. That's that's. Oh, kind of. Well, it's 
it the problem with it is that it's done so quick, first of all, and they didn't have the money to do like a straight on hippo attack. Like I think they had a couple of them attack, uh-huh. and like you you saw them swimming towards the boat and everything, and it was it was it, this this just went by real quick. It, and you're right, that looks like a ride at Disney World. Yeah, it looks mm. like a ride at Disney World. Like you know, you could tell that they they didn't have a whole hippo body right here. <laughs> yeah, she did. It went back in the water like a mechanic, like <laughs> yeah, animatronic. Yeah. Nah. And you know, and later on as it goes, like I said, they continue to do small things. Like there's some, there's some cool heartfelt moments. And again, that goes with Amy. And what's cool about this, this is like they add, they actually add a lot of emotion to Amy because Amy is lost. Amy doesn't have a family. You know, she's she loves Peter, but she's like, I just don't feel like I belong. And when she meets these these apes, feeling doesn't really change. Hello, I'm Amy. I'm Amy. <laughs> Yeah, this bitch thinks she's better than us, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm telling you, yeah, you are. Uh, Boys, I don't know what that yeah. was, but let's just go on back oh, over. Bring oh, the you, attitude in this neighborhood. Yeah, oh, you want, you want them college apes, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, you know, I'm, I'm saying this because there are some uh, there are some good things here, man. Like I said, I'm laughing at some things. I'm really feeling the emotion here. Uh, but like I said earlier, you know, we have something good, man. It's uh, stupid. It's just around the corner. You know, some, you know it ain't going to last long. They finally make it to this temple that they're looking for, where the diamonds are, which everybody's looking for, which is also close to where Amy wants to go home, as we saw where nobody wants her ass there. Uh, <laughs> but they make it to the temple. The temple looks like a, oh. they got all this money. Temple, This temple like a goddamn Nickelodeon game show. <laughs> Look like kids should be getting slimed in there or something. Yeah, because to be a hidden city, it's kind of out in the open. <laughs> it's way out in the open. <laughs> All the stuff in the movie, like I said, it hasn't been mixing well, but the sci-fi stuff on its own has been just mediocre. You know, it's okay. Uh, the kid stuff, I thought, worked well if it was, you know, probably in another movie and they were able to play it up a little bit better. Uh, the horror stuff is just ridiculous. The st- this horror stuff in this movie, because this is where the horror stuff begins. And it is probably, <laughs> and there's a lot of silly shit in this movie, but it is probably the silliest thing <laughs> in this film. It is, it's, it's the most ridiculous thing in here. So they got these, you know, they got these creatures, you know, and, and, and what, they, what they can do is so horrifying. And, they, and if you know the movie, they're gorillas. They've been talking about this whole time, like these gorillas never kill. Gorillas, they're docile animals, you know, unless, unless, they're, unless you, they're really provoked or you're harming them or something. They, you know, the, chimp, the chimps are the assholes, you know. But gorillas, cool. They're real cool. Not these. Not these. And these are so horrifying that even a reminder of them, <laughs> you know, even like you might have not seen them for days, but, oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but if you were just reminded of them later on, the, the memory can kill you. Damn, you had a heart attack. Ugh. <laughs> it, it's almost like they Bruce Campbell don't seem so over the top now does he no <laughs> no he does just not as over the top wow <laughs> they it's almost like these 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 killer gorillas they kill you in a way where they they injure you for you to just run far enough to get around a bunch of people so that you can do an over dramatic death <laughs> I don't cause I don't even know how these people die cause they're running yelling and screaming and all of a sudden they're like Ugh. yeah Oh, man. <laughs> they do that? I don't know what they did to him, but they let him go far enough. I just said, who tore him up? <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, all these people having these old silly ass dramatic deaths in here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's that from? What's that from? Uh, that's from Congo. <laughs> <laughs> Gorilla. <laughs> <It's awful. laughs> also, this is where the movie is a little bit ahead of his time. First of all, people are under the assumption that you can say the F word, fuck in a movie like a PG-13 movie one time and then if you go further than that, nah, you can't do that. They actually say it three times in this movie. Mm-hmm. And this is PG-13, y'all. Uh, also, they really pushed the gore in this movie as far as a PG-13. You see a lot of blood, a lot of bodies with their eyes bulging out, uh, severed heads. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> 
<laughs> In all fairness, that's exactly how I'd react yeah, to it. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Why you throw that shit at me? Right, yeah. <laughs> and how aggressive he threw it, too. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Take this. Take yeah. this shit. Got he's, some for your Yeah, you like, anybody lose this shit around <laughs> here? <laughs> he's like, I told you nobody yeah. likes you. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> and it's too bad that this is not a better horror movie because you know they do they like I said they are pushing the limits for PG-13 in this section horror, horror, horror film uh, the only problem is like I said the story is just not that good it gets silly as it goes along it's derivative there are moments in here where you can see that they were I don't know maybe it was in the book I don't remember but in the movie it feels a lot like Aliens you remember in Aliens where they I've seen Aliens so many times. I think it might be in the director's cut, but they set up the, like, like the turrets around a certain section. Oh, yeah, yeah, all the, yeah, yeah. All the aliens as they come by, and they're like, they're smart, man. They gotta do the same thing here. Say they're smart. They're too damn smart. You know, that's all they always say in these movies. They're smart. Mm -hmm. Too smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, they always, always go, yeah, but they don't normally do this. What the doing it now, yeah, God damn exactly. it, Jesus. Exactly. And you get off of that. Exactly. You just get off of that. <laughs> Silly parts in here where they, I, we gotta get to the movie. We gotta hurry things up. We, but we need some sort of way to explain shit. So they got him in here in, in, a, in a temple that's been lost for years, centuries. And a, the hieroglyphics on the wall, these people come in and just read it instantly. Like they're reading a comic book or something. Hmm. Here's the story. They domesticated gorillas. You call that domesticated? They're killing a man. They bred them to violence. Just like that. Pick that <laughs> up. Just say, hey, audience, you got that? All right, we can continue with the movie now. Yeah, isn't training gorillas your specialty? Not reading oh, hieroglyphs? Maybe. Well, maybe that's why he could read the hieroglyphics. So he, <laughs> now suddenly he's a cartographer. He can read monkey yeah, language. Yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> if it's a gorilla, I can read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, they, but, you know, you're throwing out those, those little extra things about their past, and she's like, oh, by the way, y'all know I was in CIA, right? That's why yeah. I'll be able to shoot a gun later <laughs> on. <laughs> you know, just, that's why they bring it out there. Uh, so maybe he was reading hieroglyphics earlier. Start, you know, uh, at this point, these, these the creatures reveal themselves, and as we say, you know, they're, they're, these, they're, the, they're the bad gorillas. They're these evil gorillas. They, even, they made them even look nasty, so you know that they're not, you know, they're, they're bad gorillas. Uh, they could be scary. I'm not, the effects, I'm not going to even say that they're bad, <clears throat> but just the way they're filmed. They're filmed so... Oh, early. Jesus. That that first uh, scene with them coming on and, and killing people. I was like, why are y'all doing this this way? Yeah. Because I'm trying to be on your side here. I'm trying to have a good time. Yes. Don't, don't do stuff like this. But it's filmed so erratic and at times so silly that it just... The effect of anything frightening that was supposed to be going on is just taken right out. Help me. Oh, and by the way, you know this fool gonna die. They, cause that's another thing. They start, you know, we get to the point where we start guessing who's gonna die here. Yeah. You know how many of us knew w once Tim Curry got there and saw them diamonds, he gonna start acting like greedy ass Daffy Duck or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Yeah, you know his ass is dead. And then that's when the gorillas finally say, "I'm just looking at him." Yeah, too. they right. say that we know this and taking our shit and uh, that's when the gorillas come out and reveal themselves and if you watch it could be it could be effective if they people angling lighting composite all that you'd be surprised at how much that affects mood mm -hmm. these these gorillas probably probably look amazing but the way they film them it looks it just the effect is gone it's, it's too erratic it's too choppy Oh, 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 and by oh, the oh, way, oh. they didn't do nothing to him. Uh, Look so at they him. just hit right by yeah, they his just head. Hit. But the thing is, in the movie, they cut it to where you thought. Uh -huh. But no, nah, they didn't do nothing. That man's all right. Shit, quit playing. Get your ass <laughs> up. And lucky for everyone. You know, every when I say everyone, I'm talking about the characters in the movie. Because, you know, in these movies, and this ain't, I can't, I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to lay this on <laughs> Congo because every movie does this. I'm surprised we haven't called this out sooner. But, you know, hey. You know, lucky for everybody, there's there's a volcano nearby <laughs> that's about to blow. You know, you always got these movies where there's a a, ba a volcano that's just on the cusp of blowing up, man. Yeah. Uh, now, we'll hold this against Congo right here. Uh, all these movies do it. It's kind of a tired cliche to do, but 
Congo, I'm sorry, but you were one of the shittiest looking scenes <laughs> where the volcano <laughs> blows up. Because it comes in and saves the day. It not only wipes out like the temple, but it takes out the, the gorillas in there. Uh -huh. And that shit looks so bad, it man. It does. Like the way they... This, this is where the money ran out. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that money burned up with this lava right here. <laughs> Look at that. Look like it. Yeah, look like he's like, look at that shit right there. Yeah, people. Yeah, it's, had no it's money. It's so cut and paste. It's so bad. <laughs> and it just got to a point where they. It just keeps going, getting worse and worse it gets, as it goes. Yeah, it keeps going. And, and, it's, and they, at this point, they're just saying, you know what? We got to get through with this. So yeah. they, they <laughs> just, wrap this up, they just yeah. start. Like, they don't have, like, we don't have time to, like, show a big old scene where all of them are dying and all kind of stuff. They just start having the gorillas just hop into the water like yeah. that. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like that. Or, like that. Or, like the, the neighborhood swimming pool or something. Well, they out there doing cannonballs, cannonballs and, and, and backflips. I want you. I want you to look at your Good man right over here. Look, look at your look at your man right here. Watch him. Woo! <laughs> That's what I was talking about. You know the 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 important characters make it out the temple. Of course, everybody dies. That was that it was either my minor character didn't have a name, but uh, everybody makes it out the temple. But here's the thing. So you know, Karen gets. She gets her she gets her diamond. She finds out what happens to the crew. She gets the equipment. Ernie gets to keep his accent. Uh, Pete and, and 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 Amy they're fine. She still got the power oh, glove and everything. We, we find out that Charles did indeed die. And it was oh not, yeah, and it no was, Charles, it was yeah, not pretty. Oh, we knew his ass died when he screamed. <laughs> right, right. But her seeing him like them showing his corpse, you like, yeah, they, God damn. They, him up those <laughs> gorillas did. and laid his ass right there. So they, <laughs> they, they they were proud of their work. <laughs> Such a Bruce Campbell looking ass up in. They got a. So, you're thinking at this point the movie can't get any sillier than than what we just saw. I mean, shit, we just saw a bunch of goddamn killer gorillas jump into lava, you know? We can't get no sillier than that. Oh, you don't know Congo. <laughs> Congo said, you know what? Maybe not, but we do have an encore. We, we let us let us just let us just leave you with one last thing before you go. A little thing we teased early in the movie that you yeah. forgot about. Let's 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 just, let's do one more stupid ass thing, huh? Just for old for old times' sake. And the movie. So coming back to the beginning, Laura Lenny, she made a threat. I don't I don't know if I showed the clip, but she made a threat to the old RB, you know, the tycoon golf guy, and she said, "Hey, if I find out." If I find that you're sending me over to the Congo for anything other than Ash or Bruce Campbell, whatever, what is it, Charles? Sure. Oh, I'm on. I'll show you. I got some for you. And she follows through on that. Do you remember what I told you? For some diamond, and not for Charlie, that I would make you sorry. Well, she follows through on that threat. <laughs> And, Vaguely. and 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 what does let me see what what does she do with this? What is the threat that she has? Well, she takes that diamond, puts it into that laser gun part of the satellite, and this is for you, Charlie. Creates a. Death Star with it. Oh, <laughs> laser that just goes right now to space where it can uh, blow up planets. Okay, I know you show that. I thought you were going to show where she was using the laser oh, like a gun and shooting apes with oh, it. Oh, why did I? You know what, Martin? Why did I not? <laughs> yeah, I was that's what, that's what I was like, okay, I'm, uh, should I bring this up? No, Maybe thank you. you no, no, thank you for she's doing shooting, that. I thought I saw her doing boy, the trail. She's yeah. shooting apes with a gun. She's, laser gun. she's shooting, yeah, she's shooting these. These apes with these with this laser gun, boy. I mean, slicing right through them. <laughs> right. <laughs> she running out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring your ass back. Yeah, yeah. Where the yeah. F going? Come here. <laughs> Bring your ass back. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> they have to have one last. <clears throat> Touching moment with Amy and Peter. You know, Amy's finally being accepted by the rest of the gorillas. Where she, she will lead them. Where she will lead them with the language and probably that laser gun. She, <laughs> she, found, she found a piece out there that was still active. 
<laughs> Damn, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Who else wants to be a hero? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not Antonio. Amy running shit. Amy. Amy's ruler. But yeah, they, uh, surgical with this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, they have, a, they have this nice moment between Peter and Amy at the end. I love you too. You know, g- goodbyes always get me, man. I was, I was, uh, you know, listen, I, I'm not, you know, I choked up a little bit watching that. I don't read really ball over movies these days, but I like I said, I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. It's, you know, good. Like I said, goodbyes always, they always get me, man. You know, and it, again, it's a, it's an ET moment that's happening right here. Is that Amy with the silverback? I see. You like I see she she got another man cool. Yeah. <laughs> I need that bitch no way. Uh, all, all those years we spent together they don't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't need Amy. I'll be I'll be fine. Yeah. Peter, old Peter back on the market. Right, right. <laughs> find Watch me, out, Peter, get some trim. <laughs> find me another gorilla. I'll be fine. Don't you mean woman? That's what I said. See his ass. <laughs> see his growing out. <laughs> but there you go, folks. The last thing. I would have been satisfied with that happy ending that we had between that little, that melancholy ending that we had with uh, Peter and, and Amy, but uh, but they had to run and do this crazy shit right here. Did you throw this away from me? You sure? She heard it. I was like, are you at your... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ernie Hudson about to jump out that balloon again. Yeah. <laughs> what if I could make it if I just jumped out right in front of you the streets? You know what? It'd be funny they came back and they saw the gorillas wearing fur coats and jewelry. <laughs> Had cars, <laughs> Grod's Gorilla City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had condos down there. <laughs> Pay, page of stores. Yeah, everybody got power gloves on. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Bling, bling. Oh, people, that's it. 